Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I know it takes a while for you to find the feed and join the party and grab your tea and coffee. I can see numbers coming up of people tuning in. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we all doing today? We'll give it a few minutes. Once I see the chat start kicking in, then I know there's lovely people out there watching. So I'll have a sip of coffee whilst we wait for that to kick in. There we go. Look, the lovely Karen Smith. Good morning, Karen. Susan Young. Good morning, good morning. A lovely cup of coffee from Jilly. Thank you, Jilly. Sound is good. Thank you, Jilly. Jilly's in the room with you today. So, oh, look at all that. Loads of names popping up now. Wow, you've all woken up. You've all come to the party. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How have you been this week? Been a, uh, despite the fact I've got a short sleeve shirt on, it's a bit nippy down here in Kent. Um, beautiful sunshine, but very, very, it was frosty this morning. Um, the first frost since the clocks have changed. Did you remember? Change your clocks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ken. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Good morning, Hayes. Oh, so many lovely, friendly faces in the room. Ah, uh, it's really nice to have your company again for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Believe it or not, we're up to episode 31. Gosh. How time flies. I mean, we're in November now. Crazy, crazy. Where's this year gone? I mean, last year was very strange because it sort of, it went busy. It sort of it went fast, but it went slow. This year just seems to have been a real blur. And um, yeah, it feels like only yesterday, it was sort of March, April, Easter. I remember Easter, yeah. Gosh. And we're fast approaching the C word. Christmas is coming. No. Has anyone got their tree up yet? I bet somebody has. I bet somebody's, or they've got their Christmas decorations out of the attic or the loft and they're getting good to go. Yeah, I don't know whether I'll put decorations up this year. It's sort of, you, you pop it up and then you spend hours doing it and then it's minutes to come down and yeah, maybe just some lights in the window or something. Not sure yet. Too early to think about Christmas. Jane, I need to send you my list of all the Christmas cards I need making. So, um, because you said that you'd finished all yours. Jane says her neighbour has a Christmas tree up. Well, I mean, the shops have got them up, haven't they? I mean, I think the shops have had some of the Christmas stuff in since August. Crazy. And they'll have the Easter eggs in soon. Mad. Totally mad. Okay, let's have a look. So welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. And over the past few weeks, we've been sort of taking it back to basics. We've had a bit of a break from Linda and the Pergamano Summer School. I mean, what Linda's been teaching us over the, the period of time with a, a tool that has so many different needles in it in different positions has been absolutely crazy. So school was due to start again next week but we've had to postpone it for a week or two. Um, Linda's having a few adverse weather conditions down in Wales. So um, we're gonna carry on with going back to basics because there's plenty we can do, isn't there? I mean, this is where we've been heading over the last couple of weeks. We've taken the beautiful butterfly wreath, we've adapted it by, what, what did I use? I used Barb's one, two, three Christmas plate, didn't I? to add different embellishments. And then we took one of the trees to create our centerpiece. We used the hills and the mountains from the starter kit to put in a landscape. And then last week we started to add some color on the back using the Perga color pens. And the way in which we applied the color last week was rather than go direct to the parchment, we went on to the mix mats. There we go, my mix mat here. So this was the, the color we were using last week. And we was using a water brush with no water in it whatsoever. These are, this has never had water in it. And we use this to pick up the color 
and then coloring our design. And what that does is it gives you a softer color palette. So for example, if I was to take, I can't remember what green I went with now. Let's have a look, let's, let's do a little tester. Um, I think this is a really nice bright green. Yeah, that was a bright green. Did I go, I think this was the, I should have written the number next to it. That was that one. You watch, it's gonna be the last one I pick up. Oh, I don't know. There we go. So I went with number 17 out of the Perga colors. And as you can see, if I go direct onto the parchment, we get a really nice, rich, deep color. I'll grab a piece of paper so you can see that. Three. There we go. So a really nice, rich, should I zoom in a little bit? Let's zoom in, just stretch up and, wait, I knew I'd get it wrong. Out, in, I want to come, so I want to come this way. There we go. So we've got a really nice, rich, deep color. However, if I was to scribble onto my mix mat, and then I take my water brush with no water in, and we apply the color, we get a softer tone. So it's great because what you could do, you could use your mix mat and put several colors on and mix them up and come up with your own color tones as well. So I could take, say we, for example, I could take the, the darker green or this color green and I can mix both of them up and see, and I'll come up with another color tone. So the, the mix mats are great for being able to do that and going back and, and getting a more soft, especially for larger areas when we're working on parchment. It can be a little bit intense at times. So we had a look at, that's how we applied the color to the back of our tree. Okay. And what I thought we'd have a look at now, we'd have a look at the hills and the mountains in the background. So we can repeat the same process with the pens, or we can go with pencils. So we could also do a mix as well. So you may find, I mean, when I say you, you may not find, in the, let me get my pink bag, I'm gonna zoom out now. Oh, that's really close. If I zoom out, so I'm gonna go this way. Hooray. A bit trigger happy today on the old camera. So I've got my pencils in here. I've got my A pencils and my B pencils, but there's a beautiful color palette of the Pergolina pens. And there's going to be a color in there that will work perfectly with your design. Now, in the past, I've always suggested that when we come to color in, we always, I personally, I try to choose my backing paper first and then decide on the colors. So remember I said last week, I'm gonna have a look through all the different designer pads and find one that I think will work really well for my design. So I was going through all the different files. I've got mine all nicely stored on the shelf. And originally I thought about Amazonia because it's got beautiful greens and beautiful color palettes there. And then I thought, Oh, Toscana, it's got that beautiful richness, so I could go for that one. But in the end, since we're talking, I mean, Antarctica, beautiful blues. So if you want to do a really nice blue tree, that would be fantastic. But I thought since we're sort of coming up to Christmas, then we've got two beautiful paper pads that the lovely Dee Paramore has designed. The Great Lakes and Toffee Apples, and these have a real wintry feel to them. So should you have a quick flick through, just so you can have a look. You may not be familiar with these ones. I mean, look at these. This is Dee at her best, at working her magic. Beautiful. They look three-dimensional, the way in which she's created them. And then on the back, you've got a beautiful, soft um, colour palette to them. 
beautiful stripes on here. So not necessarily just for Christmas, a really nice color tone and color palette that will work. I love this one, this Starburst. Look at this one, I don't know if we can, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna take it out because you'll probably pick it up better on this one. This is a really nice, look, you've got that beautiful light air and it just splays out beautifully. So this is the, the Great Lakes. Look at this. If you don't like getting inky, then this is perfect. And I think designer papers are great for that because if you're not, if you haven't got the time and you're not a, an inky, painty person, then the papers just do the job for you with these. This is nice. You've got a nice sort of open area there. Really love this one. Really dark and rich and then we've got this one here so it's using a number of our stamps and stencils and dyes to create this is great so if you had a bauble hanging let's turn it that way so you've got the branches that you could hang some christmas decorations off really lovely and then the other one which oh and then you've got barbs right this is the lace one so it really does Look, look at that one. Uh, bring that one in. Look, that's the reverse of that one. Then we move on to toffee apples. So you've got some beautiful, rich reds and burgundies and golden colours. One of my favourite ones out of this pack. Really nice and rich. This one here. Another dotty one, but in a different color tone. Love this. I was showing Jilly what we was gonna to do today and she said this is one of her favorite ones. I bet this one of mine, how many sheets have I got? Oh look, last sheet. That must be one of my favorites as well. But you can see how you've got a beautiful color palette. This is really nice, nice and rich. Bit more arty. I can see face. Can you see the face in there? Well, you've got two little eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Or is that just me? <laughs> can anybody else see the face? But I, look, I can see another face. Where's it gone? I just saw another face. Here's another face. Two eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, maybe I need some more coffee. Really nice inky one. Some beautiful stars, holly. That's a nice one. And then we start going into a more rich color palette. This reminds me of the, I'm gonna show my age now, flock wallpaper from the 70s. I'm sure my nan had something like this on her walls <laughs> when I was growing up. Again, you've got a real. So I thought out of all of those that I was going to go with this one. Okay, not my last sheet. I'm gonna have to get some more. I'm sure Jilly will pop the link in. Oh, she has, I can see that. So I'll pop that back on the shelf. Now, you've got the really beautiful, bright and vibrant side with the, the real sort of texture look to it but then you've also got the more softer subdued side as well okay now when i was looking i was holding my work over I thought, now this is really nice but it's a little bit too busy still in the background and jilly was telling me that um d had a really good idea and i'm sure linda or um josie or someone like that's mentioned it in the past i know for a fact especially linda's done it and we've done it on a couple of samples before if you take another piece of parchment and you pop it underneath, what it does, it still allows the design to show through, but it diffuses it. Let me come around on this camera. So you, look, you can still see it, but it's not as busy. But maybe you want that, that busyness behind it. It's entirely up to you. But for me, I like the, the soft 
color tones it gives a real sort of ambience or ambiance or whatever i don't know but i'm just showing you some different options what was that Josie saying yes paul we had flock wallpaper in their first your first house <laughs> i think it was a thing of the 70s wasn't it? I, i'm sure my nan had it um and it looked very rich and soft and inviting so um so this is the, the color palette now that i'm going to go with to color in the rest of my design and I can decide, I'm not necessarily, I haven't decided where, but I'm just gonna keep it central. But this will be my guide for when I now come to apply color to the, the other different elements. So for small areas, I can use the pens and go direct to there, or we can take the pencils and do the same. So again, for small areas, we could use the watercolor pencils because you won't necessarily need to blend such a small area. It's all about playing with what you have. And if you're not sure, then test it on a piece of parchment first. Is that color? I mean, if you're not sure what color you want to put the leaf, for example, trace out the leaf on a scrap piece and color it in with say the pen, the pencils, the B pencils to see which you prefer, okay? So today, I thought we'd experiment with the, the different colors. And we've also got the, um, the dorso crayons as well, which you can use to get a really nice, rich color. So are we ready? I, I've sort of been waffling, haven't I? I mean, it's quarter past already. Crazy. And I'm trying to read messages as they pop up. But um, are we all doing OK today? Have I sort of bored you all that you're, you're all, what is he on today? Lots of coffee, it helps. Okay. Groovy is all about calm and mindfulness and crafting and enjoying ourselves and experimenting, going with the flow. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so Lorraine, she's watching whilst working. Sheila likes the colours, thank you. So should we have a practice first? If I take my scrap of parchment, and what we'll do is we'll take, because we used the butterfly wreath for a lot of this, didn't we? But all I really need is a little petal, there it is, or a leaf. So we're going to trace out, I'm going to take my tumble dry sheet, give it a little white, which leaf am I going to go? I'm going to go for this one. Okay. And I'm going to take my number one tool, which is hiding. And we're going to, going to trace out with the number one tool, this leaf three times. One, because I want to see which is going to be the best color. So I'm going to do four actually. Sometimes it is good to, rather than go straight onto your work, just practice. And for the sake of spending five, 10 minutes having a play can make a difference to your work. So there we go. We've got four pet petals, leaves, whichever. So when I have a look at my color background, I may decide that I wanna do these maybe yellow, or green or orange. But let's just keep it simple, shall we, just to, to try. So I'm gonna go for this really bright green. So this is number 16. And I'm gonna go direct onto the parchment. So I'm just gonna put the color down, no blending, no shading, just direct to the parchment. Option number one. Option number two, I'm going to take the same color and I'm going to take my water brush, pick up that green, and then color in on there. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little note of what I've done. Because, no, me, 
I'll, I'll forget the minute we get to what we've done. So, um, so this is get a pen that writes. There we go. Take a little micron pen. So this one is pen direct. This one is pen um, brush. I'll know what that means. Then I'm going to take my pencils now. So let's have a look. There's some beautiful greens in the pencils. Let's have a look here. So in my, if I go, I'll stick with the bright. And then I'm going to have a look at this one in the, the A pencils. Yeah, let's try those to start with. So I have the A13, which is the watercolour pencils, and the B7. So if we go with the B7, I'm just going to apply, again, I'm just going direct. I'm not going to do any blending. Okay, so this is the B7. And then we'll go with the A13. So this is the watercolour one. But we're just using it dry. Might be the wrong colour tone, but I don't know. I've got three different colour tones here. And it will always look different when I'm working on black as well. So this is A13. Okay. So let's take, take, let's take a piece of paper and we'll bring that up now so we can see. I mean, it doesn't look much, especially when you're white on white. But that's, we've turned it over so we can see the white outline. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm now going to take this and overlay it. See, that green works quite well now. Let me come in on, on this camera. Because that's the sort of area it's going to be. So they all work, but give me different colour tones. And if I move it around, let's do it on the, the overhead. If I move it around onto the red, let's zoom in on this one. I think the overhead will be better for this. Here we come, nice and slowly. Okay. So then as we, it'd be easy if I hold that and then move the paper around. It's quite magical really, isn't it? So I could use any of those greens. Now the only one, especially when we're on the red area, the only one that looks a little bit muddy is this one. And that was the one where we use the mix mat and the water brush but when it's in the green it looks okay there we go oh that's really moody mm. okay so ask me if i've made a decision what kind of i could go with <laughs> mm -mm. Not sure. I think what we're going to do for the background, because I want to blend those colours and get a really nice, and it's a larger area, I'm going to use the B pencil. So I'm going to use the B7, okay, to put my heels in. So if I turn this over, and I'm going to work on the, the black mat so it's easier for you to see. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the pencil on its side. Barbara does this a lot in the, in the shack. Rather than how you would hold a pencil normally and go on in sort of circular, if you hold it to the side, you'll get a, a nicer coverage. And I'm just going on very, very lightly with my colour. Okay. 
So no, I'm not, look, I'm going to go into the star. I'm not worried about the star. I'm not worried about staying in inside the line. Do we know why that is? Because I can rub it out if I go over the line. So I'm going to put some green in here and I'm going to, let's do, let's do all of them the same green to start with. Okay. So we're putting sort of like a, an undercoat or a base coat down. And I'm just sticking, as long as I don't go into the green on the Christmas tree, I'll be okay. Nice and easy. Go up, circular motion. And then we'll come over this side. Again, I'm not worried about going into the star because I can take it away. Now, is this going to be grass down here or is it going to be a lake? Is this tree sitting on the edge of the lake? Hmm. Is the blue going to work? I mean, look, even with no blending, if I turn that over, you're starting to, to get some colour. And it doesn't look too bad on camera, does it? Because the paper behind diffuses. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I'm so indecisive today. It's one of those days. I tell you what, let's go grass on the bottom as well. So we're going to go all the way along into those areas there. Oh, I've got to do the stalk as well. Mm. The stalk, the trunk, the trunk. Why do I call it a stalk? What are you colouring in with at home? Or are you just watching to see what, see what I come up with first? Do you have a preference? I mean, if you've got the polychromos, you could do exactly the same as what I'm doing. And if you've got the set of 60, you've got a really nice some beautiful greens in there as well. Okay. Right, so I've got my underlay or my base coat down, so to speak. So if I turn it over, we can see now how it's starting to, to come together. But what I want to do now is to blend it and take away the, the scratchiness. If I, let's see, if I do that, Look, what a difference. Look at that. That looks terrible. But if you put it on there, it doesn't. So don't worry about, oh, I can't colour that well. My colouring is not up to scratch. Something like this, you can get away with. But it, it's nice to be able to have those options, isn't it? Okie dokie. I'm not going to colour it on there because that looks terrible, but I'm going to do half and half. Okay. So I need one of our lovely spot on sponges. And I'm going to take some dorso oil. A couple of drops on there. Not too much. Then I'm going to take my nibs. Okay, I've got those in the, these my lovely little storage pots, which we have available on the website. And then I need my blending pen. There it is. Pop that in there. Okay. Now, if this is the first time of using the Dorso Oil, what you need to know is that if you use too much, it can take all the colour off or it can move it around too quickly and therefore you get sort of like um, streakiness. Okay, streakiness, is that a word? Let me show you. I'm going to hold it in there so that the nib really sucks up the oil. If I go on here, can you see how it's sort of, where I went there first, it's starting to sort of lift it off and move it around too much. 
So what it's going to do is it's going to give me patchy areas. But as the oil starts to evaporate, see, it's quite magical because parchment doesn't like moisture. And, but the oil doesn't create moisture. So I'm going in sort of like a circular motion just to pick up and break down the pigment. Now, I'm going to put a piece of paper on here so we can see. We can see now how the colour's now intensified. And actually, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. But I can see some streakiness, see? This is where we're our own worst critic. So let's just blend that colour in first. Now, if I take my backing paper and we turn that over, look at the difference where we've blended the heel here, the heel here, but we haven't blended the heel here or here. Okay. To me, the, the magic of the, the dorso oil turns the pencil into like a paint. And I'm not worried about sort of getting any shading at this point. All I'm doing is breaking up the pigment that we've applied to get like a base coat down. And I've got the nibs and the nibs. And also you'll notice that I'm concentrating on heel by heel. If I wanted to, I could do the traditional method of taking a tissue, folding it into a point, have I got a tissue? Let me see. Oh, I have got a tissue. Bless me, he says. Whoops. Tissue's now on the floor. Okay, but I have one. <laughs> so that's it. Ooh, white out. It's snowing now. You can't see what I'm doing. So let's go out a little bit. So we take our tissue. Tissue is better than kitchen towel because kitchen towel tends to have texture to it. So we can fold it in half, fold it in half again, fold it in half again, and again, and then give it a little twist. So you're creating like a ice cream cone, Ooh, quite pretty flower ice cream cone but what that's doing that's giving you i mean it's just like a blending nib but it just has a larger surface area so now what i can do is i can pick up a little bit of the oil and blend larger areas more quickly what it doesn't give me or this particular one doesn't give me it doesn't give me the control of getting into sort of little areas. So I would definitely use the blending nib for that. And I'm just gonna go, I can go back over where I've just been. So it's giving you options on how to break down the pigment. And it's surprising how far it goes. Now, I'm not going to go right into the corner of those trees. So I want to use, like, I've gone over the edge, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go over the stars just to make it easier. But I've now got a really nice blend of colour. And then I can take my blending nib and go right into those little corners. There we go. So I can really sort of sharpen up the edges if you're worried about the surface area being too big. You can see the difference, can't you? Can you? Let's have a look. Right, white paper. 
Dum, 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 dum. Look at that. You can definitely see the difference on that. Okay. So then when I bring in my design of paper, yes. Look, look at the difference. I haven't decided which way. So I want to put the, the red, or do I want to go green? I reckon that when I come to complete my card, I want the red up in this area. So to remind myself of that, what I'm going to do is in the top corner, I'm going to put T for top so that I know <clears throat> that when I'm looking at my colouring, that always, let me kind of sit, that T will tell me then that's how I've decided because I'm going to get a different look every time I turn that round. And I'll think if I've coloured it in, why does that work when it, I wanted it to? I don't know, saying that, that's quite nice. The yellow. No, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. There we go. So we can see now how we're starting to build up the colour. And this is the side we haven't done yet. Easy. No skill required for that at all, especially when we're working in a larger area. And you have choices. You can use the blending nibs or you can use a tissue as I've just shown. And for me, for doing larger areas, the pencil is more forgiving because I'll show you now, where I went over the line, if I now take my eraser pencil, which I know is gonna be in my pink bag. Yep. So I've got choices. I can use the, the white end or the pink end. So I'm gonna, I prefer using the white. Takes it off quicker. And we all know how impatient I am. Then we can lift the color out of the star. We can just tidy up the inside of this leaf. And I think that's the only place where I went slightly over the edge, so to speak. Yeah, that's nice. So should we carry on and do the other side now? So again, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the tissue to do my initial blending because it's quicker and I'm not worried about the stars nice and easy see how quick you can blend those colors I'm going to turn it around so that I can see where I'm going and if the color stops blending and it stops moving, then you just need to apply a little, pick up a little bit more oil on your tissue. Okay. So, right, so we've got a question from Jilly. What is that question? Let's have a look. Can you rub the color out after the oil has been used? Yes, you can, absolutely. I could leave this for a week, I could leave it for a month, and I can go back and rub it all out. Okay, let me show you. So I'm gonna take, where's my pencil sharpener? I just want to sharpen my eraser pencil. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder whether I have a, an older piece of artwork to hand just to prove that you can take it and I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it um, yeah where are those pieces I better put them somewhere safe bear with me for a moment whilst I delve into my archives ah there we go I found a piece 
Okay, because I don't really want to rub out my my landscape. So here's one that we've done this before. We've got a really nice sort of, this is the butterfly from the one, two, three plate from Linda Williams. Now this we did, oh gosh, a couple of months back. And what I can do now is I can completely erase the color. Now, depending on the color you've used, for example, like a red, it may leave a slight hue on the parchment. But if you're gonna put a color over the top, then it doesn't really matter. Am I coming on this camera? There we go. So you can see how there's a slight hue. Now I can go back and carry on trying to lift that color off. I mean, I've gone with a yellow, so it's quite light anyway, but you most definitely can go back and take the color out once you've used the oil on it as well. Okay. Oh, lovely coffee. So let's have a look. So we've still got to do some blending on this. I can't believe it's 22 already. Wow. So I'm going to take my blending pen now and go into the smaller areas so I can get a nice crisp finish. See for me I love this type of colouring because I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. I, I am, but I'm not. I'm sort of putting this sort of like color tone, this undercoat down. And what am I doing now? Okay, yes. So paper coming in underneath. So let's bring that up to the camera. So there's a few sort of light areas just here, but I can go back, I mean, Blimey, I mean, no one's really going to notice that. And I've definitely gone over the edge at the bottom. So, so if I use the pink one, pink, I can take the colour off, but it just takes a little bit longer to come off. Okay, I've gone in, I think I'm fine on that. So now if I take my piece of paper, T for top, bring that in and I've now got my and you know what the the paper in the background adds different tones to the the green we've just applied so if you don't want to do any sort of shading or depth then you don't have to but I think we will I think what we'll do is if I, so I need a, another B pencil to do this so there are three lovely greens in the B pencils. So I've been working with the, the brightest green, which is the B7. Then we have a, a B15, which is like an olivey green. And then you've got a B6, which is a more darker sort of pine forest rich green. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over the top. See, this may not, it may be too light. So I'm doing the same as before. I'm using the side of the pencil. Can you see? Yeah, it is. You can see that it's there is some color going down. Okay, so we're gonna do this one here. Let's get that white piece of paper. It's very subtle. Oh yeah, you can really see that, can't you? It's really sort of scratchy and horrible. Let's bring it over onto it. So we've got a different tone now of green. So I should like, so that hill there is following through over to this hill. So let's follow that through with the green. So this is the olive green that we're putting a layer down of. I mean, these haven't got to be green. You could do some beautiful white work to give sort of like mountain tops 
with snow-capped peaks. It's all about having the choices. Let's put a little bit more down on there. Now, this is where it could go terribly wrong. I'm now going to go with the darkest green. Now, the darkest green, do I go on the top or do I go on here? Mm, I'm going to do on, on this one. Okay. Why am I going on this one? It's a smaller <laughs> hill. And if I don't like it, it'll be quicker to rub out. <laughs> uh, we got this little bit here. Okay. White paper. Horrible color hills. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But we haven't blended yet. All we've done is we've put the base coat down and then we've put a darker color on top. Now I could have put both colors down at the same time and then blended them together. But for me, my preference is to put the base coat down first and then put the secondary color on top. So I'm gonna take my tissue and I'm now gonna blend that color over the top. And it's just going to give a very subtle difference. I'm going to use the same nib just to get into those corners. And what I'm going to do, I'm now going to do the, the darker green in the top. I know I've still got that one to do, but I just want to show the difference between the two sides. Okay. So I'm taking away the scratchiness of the pencil being put down. And this is where they're really forgiving. Look, so we can see there. So if I now bring the, the paper in, let's zoom in on this one so you can really see. So we zoom in. Here we come into the hills. There we go. So we can see now how, wait, where are we going? Up there. How we've started to play. Now, see how I've got this little dark area. I could leave that there, or I could take my blending pen and just blend that harsh line away. If I thought well, I do, it's come underneath slightly, then definitely the pink eraser over the top. Very, very lightly, no pressure, and it will lift that color away. So then we're gonna do this side now. So I'm gonna go to this side of the tissue, do the lighter color first, pick up some of the oil blend that in nice and easy and then i've got that now this dark area here this tissue for me is a little bit too clunky so i'm going to take the light color first rather than going into a new nib i'm just going to get into the area in the light one first and now I'm going to go into the dark one. So this now becomes my dark green nib. There we go. Break that up a little bit. Now I've definitely gone over the edges there. Wow, is that really the time? Tent. Gosh. See? I have so much fun when we're colouring in. So now I'm going to take where I've gone over the, the outside edge, just to tidy up. Normally I would do this once I've finished all my coloring in rather than do bit by bit, um, but it's just to show how you can do that. And I really want to put the trunk of this tree in. I don't want to leave this 
before the end of the session. So we've got a nice brown. Ooh, slipping and sliding. So we're going to put the brown in. Very light. Oops. Very, very light. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the green because it doesn't really matter. It's the same nib. I don't really need to have any shading on that. So should we have a look, see what it looks like? We can see, I mean, this is the back. It's quite nice on the back as well. But we, we want to look, so if I, let me put the piece of paper in underneath. Pop that in underneath. So it, it's not, I say it's not, it is really good. I mean, I've gone over the edge there. See, this is where you, the white paper shows you where you've gone over the edge. So it's a white piece of paper will be your friend when it comes to doing this. And now, top, Whee. let's zoom back out again now. Nice. I like you, that. Yes. So I've got my T for my top. So I know that I'm in the right position. And we're just very slowly starting to, to build up, aren't we? And we've got the different tones of green for the hills. But as I say, if I'd gone for blue backing paper, then I would have done sort of like a blue tree with blue hills, purple hills. So it was sort of, for me, that's the way in which I like to, to colour. I like to tie into the backing paper and to get the toning effect. But this, I mean, this doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. This could be, if I hadn't put the star on, this could just be a, a summer tree, spring tree, autumn tree. Just like, did you see Barb on Friday with the trees and mantle stamps? How you could take a naked tree, put its mantle in place, and depending on the colour of the ink pad that you use, could really change the look of it and to give all the different seasons. If you miss that, then go back on to Barbara's blog from Saturday, I think it was. It was Friday or Saturday, I can't remember now. And um, the links are there for you to go back and watch it because it's so magical. So if you like your stamping and you love trees, the Trees and Mantle stamp set is, is fantastic for creating the different seasons. I mean, now we're coming into winter, mornings are getting colder, so you could just have a naked tree and just put a little bit of glitter on to give it some glisten. So, um, yeah. So when we're looking at this, I sort of digress slightly, when we look at this, this could be any season, dependent on the colours that you're using. So what else? I can't believe it's 10 to, we're going to do a little bit more, but I, I just want to have a sort of a bit of a recap what we've got coming up this week. So where are we now? We're Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday, because it's Groovy Tuesday. Tomorrow, it's the second part of the Moment of Clarity Christmas pop-up shop. So Barb will be back at three o'clock live on Facebook and YouTube. So that's Wednesday, tomorrow. Then on Thursday at 10 o'clock, it's the Shack Shack. And then on Sunday, Barb's back on the TV. No rest for the wicked. And I can tell you she's very wicked at times. <laughs> so then Barb's back on Sunday for our usual first Sunday of the month, two till four. And what's on that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Two till four. I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to let Barb tease you with that later in the week. But some beautiful stamps. Um, yeah. Trees, birds, stags, snow globes. Mm. So, um, yeah. So, we've got, yeah, we've got plenty of time. Okay. So, we're looking at the reef, aren't we? And this is a reef that we created using the butterfly reef. 
than when we first started off back in the day with Groovy Tuesday. We've used Barb's Christmas tree style. If you're looking for Christmas cards, for me, this is one of the, the best plates for sort of quick and easy little cards because you can just trace them out around there, use a die cut to cut out the square, you could use the Pico squares, or you could just use a craft knife and a ruler. If you use the rainbow parchment, you haven't got to worry about any color. Really nice plate for quick and easy Christmas cards. Okay, and that's what we used in the middle of this one. But I could have chosen any of the nine different designs from this plate to go in the middle of my reef. Now, I don't know if you read Barb's blog last night. I'm sure Jilly will put a link into uh, the blog from last night. And what we've done, we've done, we've done, I say we. Some of you at home may be familiar with the beautiful poppy reef and the poppy meadow that Barb drew many, many moons ago. And yesterday, during one of our, I'm not, it was an hour, during a creative meeting that Barb had with the lovely Lucy, one of our in-house designers, they decided that these would be fantastic as stamps. Two beautiful little A6 stamp sets, perfect for any occasion really, but Sunday, this first Sunday of the month um, is Remembrance Sunday. So what Barbara decided was that for every plate sold, we will donate a pound to the Poppy Fund Appeal. So if you go for that one, we'll donate a pound. If you go for that one, we'll donate a pound. If you go for both of them, we'll donate two pounds. And the same applies to the stamps as well. So it, it's just our little way of sort of giving back and sort of saying thank you. But the purpose, not the purpose, this has, let me open this up. If you're looking for a really nice reef, you've got a fantastic poppy reef here. You've got the twiggy element of it. And you can, if I remember, yeah, I do remember. Yes, right. I've forgotten about this, but it's just reminded me. Uh, what do I want? I want, let me take a piece of paper. Can you see these two little lines here? You've got a little line there, little line there, and you've got the same over here. Okay. If you trace out that part of the twiggy reef and you stop at those lines, if you turn it around, line up those two little lines, okay, with your design, you will get a complete twiggy reef, okay? So you could then decorate that with whatever you wanted to, whether you wanted to go Christmas or just a beautiful autumnal, autumnal? autumn reef, uh, sort of it's naked, isn't it? So just turning it around, that's, I've just seen it, I've just remembered why those little lines were popped in place. Okay, so again, versatility, you have choices. And for me, that's one of the great things I love about the Groovy system. So Jilly's popped the links of those into, into the chat. So if you're looking for those, then check out the website. Barb's back again tomorrow for the Christmas pop-up shop at three o'clock on Facebook and Clarity and um, Facebook on Facebook and YouTube. And then Thursday is the Shack Shack as usual. Those beautiful, beautiful. Um, oh, it's gone. What are the leaves? Oh no! It's because I've been talking about the poppies. Uh, ginkgo, ginkgo leaves. That's it continuing the journey with the ginkgo leaves. Beautiful, beautiful designs. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, 
and you've learned something from it, but don't forget you can go back and watch again and again. I'm back again with you next week whilst Linda sorts out her adverse weather conditions down in South Wales. And um, we'll carry on our journey. We may do a little bit of white work, a little bit of pico cutting. We'll see. But there's still plenty to add to this design. So um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for all your lovely comments. I've been reading and sort of seeing what's coming up. And um, take care. Stay safe. And I will see you again next week. Take care now. Bye bye.